I would now like to call on the stage Dr. K. Mahesh, IS officer of 2009 batch. He is currently posted as CEO at Delhi Urban Slum Improvement Board, Government of NCT of Delhi, and taking up some phenomenal projects which were never thought of in the department. He is also the honorary president of Delhi Administration Officers Academic Forum, a think tank of active civil servants. Over. Thank you. I'll pocket all the compliments. And uh, Honorable uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kalita, uh, the Vice Chancellor, Mr. Kumar, uh, Mr. Sanjeev Chopra, and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Sanjeev Chopra talked about 1946. I want to start with 1947 and how India is a basket case of continuing crisis and their resolutions. Uh, when independent India came into being, it was faced with unimaginable multiple crises. Violence of partition, as you know, resettlement of refugees, consolidation of federations, riots, famines, and so on. All these had to be dealt with immediate effect, as indeed they were. Ladies and gentlemen, the Indian administration along with the civil society have been dealing with crisis management as the normal in the past 75 years. India provides an excellent framework of crisis management with some issues. Sometimes our preparations, preparation is not enough and we have to handle each crisis separately. We must recognize it is not just the public administration that resolves crisis but civil society and its key participants. For example, when faced with the challenge of COVID, we have seen that this coordination is missing with the private with the is missing and the private sector has not necessarily performed at optimal levels ladies and gentlemen my presentation is going to be in two parts first part deals with the theoretical framework related to crisis management in the context of public administration the second part deals with the problems of execution which is the biggest challenge in the context of crisis management Crisis management has received inadequate attention, as you know, in public administration because it primarily deals with organizational and bureaucratic routine. Particularly, the traditional public administration focuses mainly on planned activities which pass through public policy making process, as you all know. Although the area of crisis management is not systematically analyzed by scholars of public administration, yet the insights from literature on public administration can be applied to crisis management and emergency response. Well, we all know about the three specific phases of crisis management. The first is the preventive aspect. The second is the rehabilitation aspect. Third one is the coordination, which is between the institutions in a rap rapidly changing situation, which has been emphasized by many scholars. Effective crisis management relies on decision-making strategies. The first and most important step in this method is situation assessment, as you all know. The second step is choosing decision-making strategies based on the type of crisis. The public administration literature provides several guidelines for choosing appropriate strategies in different crisis situations. For instance, the classical public administration emphasizes bureaucratic characteristics such as command and control, about which Mr. Dalbir uh, Singh just talked and referred to this point, and an impersonal bureaucracy, top-down management, and a rigid structure. However, the traditional model does not and cannot solve all emergency management problems. In fact, the top-down structures may slow down or hinder the response, especially in situations where more flexibility is needed. This alternative view of allowing more flexibility in crisis times is contained in the new public administration movement. This movement emphasized administration's responsiveness to the public. In contrast to the classical approaches that emphasize efficiency and control, the new public administration heralded openness, change, equity, and the involvement of a rapidly changing society. The NPA called for proactive administrator with a burning desire for social equity and providing greater levels to those in greater need. Ladies and gentlemen, overall, the public administration theory includes valuable schools of thought that can benefit emergency managers at different times and in different situations. No single perspective may be complete in itself. For a more holistic approach, we need to appreciate 
that different and often contradictory perspectives contain important insights that are useful in differing circumstances. Ladies and gentlemen, moving on to the second part of my address is the issue of execution of crisis management in India and, and, building capa and, and capacity building. Now, this is very important. Susma Shwaraj talked about the steel frame, the civil services. The steel frame is rusted and it calls for reforms. That's very, very important. Let's, uh, let's accept it. This is a reality that the steel frame is getting rusted and we need to address this issue. India has been able to handle disasters, of course, in an effective manner. However, the public administration for better and effective execution in crisis management requires reforms for the following reasons. First, there is a need to connect the qualities required to be a public servant and qualities which are tested. The current system of recruitment is based on academic performance rather than selecting on the basis of fire in the belly for public services. Fairness and decision making, honesty coupled with academic performance. Second, the recruitment in the Indian civil services for the IAS, IPS and IFS and other services are through a single competitive exams conducted yearly by the UPSC. The competency skills needed for the IPS, IAS, IFS are totally different, which needs a separate system of recruitment. Third, of course, the training for each official after recruitment, which needs to be based on training needs analysis. For the system of transfer and posting, this is a very serious and a serious problem, which is demotivating the civil servants in absence of a fixed tenure for desired outcomes. Fifth, there is a need for transparent and post-retirement policy for the appointment of retired civil servants to avoid conflict of interest. The elephant in the room is corruption, the biggest problem of India's governance. In a representative democracy, the role of elective representatives to lend values is critical for the effective functioning of public administration. However, one needs to draw a difference between political interference and political guidance. This is very important to the bureaucrats. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, I would like to say that crisis and its management are going to be a perennial, it's going to be perennial in nature on day-to-day -day basis and year-to-year -year basis. Crisis worldwide or otherwise are part of pathology of modern living. It is not possible to view the administration of postmodern society without a complete understanding of crisis, rehabilitation and solutions. We may be well faced with a situation that one crisis is over and the another starts or multiple crises occurs at the same time. As it happens, we are used to a status quo mentality which discounts the existence of crisis. Crisis management, ladies and gentlemen, can go horribly wrong as evidenced by, Chinese, by China's handling of COVID as compared with other countries and societies. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what makes this topic both a reminder and a challenge. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, uh, Professor Chanchal Sharma, for giving this opportunity uh, to, a, to a practitioner. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mahesh. It was very brave of you to acknowledge the issues in bureaucracy. In a way, if the very structure designed to improve the governance is becoming mm -hmm. the hindrance in achieving the desired goal to serve the public interest,